All right, so what you can see right behind me right now is my R36 Passat. Now this car here is obviously my car and I just wanna quickly make a quick video going over the last thing that I've upgraded on this car or added to the car or the necessity that this car has needed. Now, this is an R36 Passat and they come factory standard with Xenon headlight globes as well as high beams and they are the D1S globes and to be honest, where I live, uh, the roads around my house, very long, very high speed, no traffic lights. We're talking 80, 100K zones, no traffic lights. And whilst these headlights in the city uh, abs <coughs> are absolutely fine, uh, out here, it's, it's less than ideal. I've already hit two animals with it. I know, not good. Um, and I don't want any more. I want to be able to see potholes. I want to be able to see if there's trees down. I want to be able to see if there's anything like that in the distance. So what do you do if that's the case? Well, I had added a King's light bar, a cheap 20 inch light bar, and I mounted that here. I custom fabbed up and welded up a bracket for that. That was okay, it looked ugly, and then I decided that I wasn't happy with the output considering how ugly it was. So I got a steady STK4, ST4K actually, 22 inch light bar, mounted that on top, and now the plastic of this was nowhere near strong enough to hold that light bar in place without it vibrating an absolute shitload. So, what do you do when you do that? Well, you come up with a different solution. So, what I have done and what I'm going to be showing you in today's video is where I currently have the light bar mounted, and that is behind the grill down here. I'm sure you probably didn't even see that until I pointed that out. So, if you come up here, look at that, you can't see it. If you come up here, you can't see it. If you come on the angle, look at the car on an angle, you can't see it. It's not until you go right down here that you go, holy shit, there's a dual row 22 inch light bar beneath the car. And that is making an absolutely awesome difference. So, what I'm going to quickly show you now is how it's hooked up, how it's all plugged in, and I will show you basically the wiring that I made because I custom built the wiring limb for it. So, let's go on with that. All right, so quickly now, I'm just gonna go over before I jump in and show you, I've put a head torch on so I can show you the engine bay clearly because it's quite dark in my garage now at the time of night it is. So if we look, this is where it sits. We can see that the LED rows sort of line up with the grill mounts there and point out in between the lines the, or the gap in the opening for the grill. That is awesome. So what that means is not only is this very discreet, and uh, required no modification that is irreversible, uh, but it is also not hardly blocking much of the light from the light bar, or the grill is not blocking much of the light from the light bar. So, how do you mount something like this on the car? Well, you could just use a bit of angle iron. I don't know why, but I decided to get flat bar and then weld it together into an angle just to make it the perfect size for the car. Uh, needless to say though, if you look down here, in the car or well, you cannot see it there's a bolt about here behind the grill and likewise on the other side it's about here and behind down there there's enough thread on that for about a three mil bit of uh, metal right behind it which is what i've done i removed those bolts on either side put a flat bar across oh sorry a flat bar across that goes this way um join that together drilled the holes in that then put another bit of flat bar welded it and the light bar mounts down into that. So that's the light bar. And whilst you've got the grill out, you get access through for a wire. So the wire from the light bar comes up. There's a little hole somewhere about here that you can pass a wire through. And this is the bit where I'll turn my head torch on and you can see the reflection of my camera. But in here is where the wire comes in. So on my R36 here, ignore the mess because I also have DRLs installed on this car as well. So that's another wiring expense, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Uh, let me touch the focus in there. Okay, so here, high beam wire comes in from the front of the grill. Touch the focus again. Comes in, this is my little harness. All right, so I've decided to opt for a different method here because that was just not working. So, this is DRL stuff, that's fine. This, however, is the high beam wire that comes in from the front grill, and we see that goes into this conduit. The left side there, the negative, goes down to the grounding point just down here, which is also where the ground for the relay goes. So, I'm using the grounding point that is down there for the relay and the light bar. The power for the light bar comes up and plugs into the back of the fuse. We get signal from the red, uh, sorry, we get signal from the green and purple 
wire there, which is the high beam wire. We just use a T-tap into that. That plugs into the fuse. We get our power for the fuse box straight away. You come in here, there's a spare rail. This is a po Every rail on this is positive, and we just tap straight into that, and that gives us our um, positive power signal. Of course, I'm running an inline fuse from that, so if the wire there were to break, it won't have power. This is all solid, and then if the wire were to become unplugged from there, it's fused. Likewise with that as well, for some reason, I decided to get a fused relay as well. That way we can just be 100% certain that there is definitely gonna be no fire if something goes wrong, because there is two fuses for one light bar. It's totally overkill, but for such a small little neat system, to have so many fuses is just a peace of mind to know that this thing is, well, not gonna set itself on fire, touch wood. But there we have it. There's just a basic quick rundown. Light bar on the R36 Passat, massive amount of vision, and uh, of course, I will show comparative photos right now with them off and with the light bar on, and then you can see the difference between the headlight globes and the high beam globes. Now take note, where you can't see off to the left, it's not because this light bar doesn't have a fast side throw. It actually does have a pretty good side throw. Uh, just keep in mind, it drops down about 20 or 30 meters. Uh, sorry, probably drops down about 10 meters there, and then it keeps going down. It's just a massive drop off there, and there's no way the light bar was going to be able to light it without being up much higher and pointing down. So, as far as we're concerned, though, the throw on the difference there, or the throw on the light bar, shows a massive difference, and I'm super happy with this mod. Airflow, I will continue to monitor. Um, I haven't seen my oil temp climb too much higher than normal, uh, maybe one or two degrees higher. But aside from that, it seems completely normal and completely uh, similar to how it normally is. So with that being said though, there's my install of my light bar. There's my wiring, my short little um, wiring harness I built up for it, as well as that. It is a little bit messy in here, but keep in mind I also have the DRL control box in here, and all my DRL wiring is on this side as well for, you guessed it, the daytime running lights I have installed on the R36 as well. So, there we have it. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Looking forward to doing seeing more people with installs like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.